Chapter 9. The Nine Situations. The night was cool, and the sound of the forest was alive with the calls of owls and the rustling of leaves. The tribe of Harguth sat around a large fire, the flames casting flickering shadows on their faces. Zuljin and the other orc chiefs, Skarik and Grongar, sat in a war council, discussing the recent victory over the Dark Mages. Harguth, the shaman and chief of the tribe, lay in the middle of the circle, his breathing shallow and labored. Gromach, a seasoned orc warrior from the Lost Tribe, sat by his side, a look of concern etched on his face. Gromgar, an experienced warrior and the successor to Harguth, added, The Tower of the Magus has been toppled, but our work is not yet done. We must continue to protect our land and our people from anyone who would seek to harm us. The council nodded in agreement, their grunts and hand gestures filling the air. As the fire crackled and danced, the orcs discussed their next move, their determination and loyalty to their tribes strong as ever. Zuljin sat in the war council, his face grave as he spoke. The ancient orcish wisdom of war recognizes nine types of terrain that we may encounter in battle, he said. Dispersive ground with scattered obstacles, facile ground that is easy to traverse, contentious ground where opposing forces are likely to clash, open ground with few obstacles, ground of intersecting highways with multiple paths, serious ground that requires extra caution, difficult ground that is hard to traverse, hemmed in ground that is tightly enclosed, and desperate ground that offers little hope of success. Skarik, the bloodthirsty orc chief, interrupted with a grunt. We must be able to adapt to any terrain, and use it to our advantage. We must always be mindful of the opportunities and challenges each type of ground presents. Gromgar, the calm and cold-blooded orc chief, added, indeed. We must study each type of ground and plan accordingly. The art of war is not just about brute strength, but also about strategy and adaptability. The council sat in silence, contemplating the words of the orc chief. When fighting in our own lands, we have the advantage of familiarity and support, Skarik declared finally with a firm nod. The terrain is our ally, and we can use it to disperse any invading forces. Gromgar nodded in agreement. We must remember the ancient orcish wisdom, when a chieftain is fighting in his own territory, it is dispersive ground. Zuljin spoke up, when the enemy has pushed into our lands, but not too far away from their own, it is easy to retake. We can quickly seize control and push them back out. He made a sweeping gesture with his arm, emphasizing the point. It is an ancient orcish wisdom that we must use in these times of conflict. Controlling the most advantageous positions on the battlefield is paramount, Gromgar rumbled, his deep voice echoing off the walls of the shelter. We must fight for these positions if we wish to gain an edge over our enemies. Indeed, Skarik agreed, pounding a fist against the ground. The possession of such locations gives us a great advantage, and we must not let it slip away. Harguth nodded slowly, his eyes firmly closed. It is important to remember the ancient orcish wisdom that emphasizes the importance of controlling strategic locations in a conflict, he said softly. This will be key to our victory. Open ground is the best place to fight a battle, Skarik declared, pounding his fist. It allows us to maneuver and use the terrain to our advantage, rather than being hindered by obstacles or terrain. Gromgar nodded in agreement, adding, indeed. Ancient orcish wisdom tells us that having liberty of movement will give both sides an equal chance of victory. We must make sure we choose our battleground carefully. We must be sure to control the ground of intersecting highways, Gromgar said, gesturing with his hands. That way, we can gain control of most of the region and use it as a base for our operations. Yes, that is the ancient orcish wisdom, Harguth added weakly from the center of the war council. Whoever controls the key points in a region will have the advantage over their enemies. Skarik nodded in agreement. It is important that we keep this in mind when planning our strategy, he said. If we can seize these intersections first, then we will be in a position of strength. When an army has penetrated deep into the heart of a hostile country, leaving its own strongholds in its wake, Zuljin warned, his voice rising above the crackling fire, it is on dangerous ground indeed. Ancient orcish wisdom tells us that we must never leave our own bastions undefended, for if we do, we risk being cut off and left to face the enemy alone. Skarik nodded in agreement, his face somber. Indeed, the ancient orcish wisdom speaks of the same thing. Tread lightly through the mountains and forests, for they are treacherous and can lead you astray. He gestured to the map on the table before them. 
we must be prepared for any surprises that may come our way. Gromgar nodded sagely. The fens and marshes can hide many secrets, he said, his voice low and gravelly. And the steeps can be difficult to traverse, even for the most experienced warriors. He paused, looking around the council. We must remember these things when we make our plans. Zuljin spoke. We must be mindful of the terrain we choose to engage in battle. Ancient orcish wisdom warns us of hemmed in ground. It's a ground that can only be reached through narrow gorges and from which we can only retreat through torturous paths. A small number of enemies would suffice to crush a large body of our men in such a situation. Scarrick continued with a grunt. We must avoid putting ourselves in such a disadvantage. We must be aware of the terrain and choose our battles wisely. We must always remember that the key to victory is not just brute strength but also strategy. Our forces must always be aware of their environment, Gromgar said, gesturing to the surrounding terrain. We cannot let ourselves be hemmed in ground, for we could be easily outnumbered and overwhelmed. We must use caution and strategy to keep our troops safe from such a fate. Zuljin spoke. Ancient orcish wisdom teaches us that in desperate situations, time is of the essence. Desperate ground is where we can only be saved from destruction by fighting without delay. Every moment wasted is a moment closer to defeat. Gromgar nodded solemnly and pounded his fist against the pile of wood in the middle. In desperate ground, he said, his voice low and grave. We must act without delay if we have any hope of survival. There can be no hesitation in our response we must fight or perish. Zuljin nodded gravely and said, ancient orcish wisdom teaches us the importance of choosing the right terrain for battle. On dispersive ground, where movement is difficult, we must not fight. On facile ground, where movement is easy, we must not halt. And on contentious ground, where the enemy is likely to clash, we must not attack. Scarrick interrupted with a grunt. We must use our knowledge of the terrain to our advantage. We must not let our enemy dictate the terms of battle. We must be the ones who choose the battlefield. On open ground, we must not try to block the enemy's way. We must use the open space to our advantage, we must be able to move and strike quickly. We must use our allies as support and strike as one, Skarik said looking each of the chiefs in the eyes. Gromgar added calmly, indeed. On ground of intersecting highways, we must join hands with our allies. We must use the multiple paths to our advantage, and create a unified front against the enemy. Gromak nodded slowly and said, ancient orcish wisdom teaches us to adapt our tactics to the terrain. On serious ground, where the conditions are favorable, we must gather in plunder. In difficult ground, where the conditions are less favorable, we must keep steadily on the march. Zuljin declared, in the ancient orcish wisdom, we know that when surrounded by enemies, the wisest course of action is to use stratagems. But if all hope is lost, then we must fight with all our might and accept our fate. He gestured to the fire, which had been crackling merrily as they talked, and said, let the fire be a reminder of the courage of our warriors, even in the face of death. These ancient tactics are still useful today, Gromgar said, gesturing to the fire as he spoke. If we can divide our enemies and prevent them from working together, we shall gain an advantage. We must use every tool at our disposal, be it ancient wisdom or modern tactics. Skarik added, we must be sure to drive a wedge between the enemy's front and rear, divide their large and small divisions, and make it difficult for the good troops to support the bad. If we do this, victory will be ours. Gromgar nodded sagely, his voice grave and deep. The ancient orcish wisdom teaches us that when the enemy's men are scattered, we must keep them from uniting. We must use tactics such as ambushes and feints to prevent them from gathering their forces and becoming a threat. He gestured towards Harguth in the center of the war council. Let us remember the teachings of our ancestors, so that we may be victorious in battle. Gromgar, the orc chief with a cool and calculating demeanor, spoke up. We should be ever ready to move forward when it is advantageous, but also know when to stop and wait for the right moment, he said sagely. This is the ancient wisdom that our tribe has passed down for generations. Harguth, who was lying in the middle, nodded in agreement, his voice weak from his wounds. Yes, we must recognize when it is time to act and when it is time to stay still, he said, this is the key to victory in battle. If we wish to defeat our enemy, we must first strike at what they hold most dear, Gromgar said calmly. 
by attacking something that they value, we may be able to disrupt their morale and make them more likely to come to the negotiation table. Speed is the key to victory, declared Skarik. He gestured towards Harguth with a nod, we must make haste and use unexpected routes to reach our destination. We should also seek out any weak points in the enemy's defenses and attack them swiftly. Zuljin agreed, adding, the ancient orcish wisdom of warfare has taught us that it is better to take advantage of the enemy's unreadiness than to wait for them to be fully prepared. We must strike fast and hard before they have the opportunity to recover. It is important to remember that the further we penetrate into enemy territory, the more unified our forces will be, Zuljin declared, gesturing with his hands for emphasis. We must not scatter our troops or allow them to become divided, for then we will surely be defeated. He paused and glanced around at the orc chiefs in attendance, his gaze stern and serious. We must make forays into fertile lands to secure supplies for our troops, Skarik declared, his voice booming through the campfire. It is a strategy we can use to gain an advantage over our enemies and provide sustenance for our own forces. Gromgar added, Aye, it is an ancient orcish wisdom that has been passed down through generations of warriors. It is a sound strategy, one that will ensure our success. Harguth chuckled softly and said, Indeed, it is a wise plan. But let us not forget that we must also be careful not to overextend ourselves or else risk weakening our forces. We must be mindful of our men's well-being, declared Skarik with a gruff nod. We must conserve our strength and energy, and devise plans that will outwit our enemies. Gromgar nodded in agreement. We must keep our army on the move, so they cannot anticipate our next move, he said sagely. Zuljin spoke with low voice. Ancient orcish wisdom teaches us the importance of morale in war. We must throw our soldiers into positions where there is no escape, and they will prefer death to flight. If they are willing to face death, there is nothing they may not achieve. Officers and men alike must put forth their uttermost strength. Gromgar added coldly, indeed. We must create a unified army, one that is willing to fight to the end. Only then we can truly achieve victory. The ancient orcish wisdom speaks of the same, Skarik said with a gravelly voice. In times of desperation and peril, when there is no place for fear or retreat, our soldiers will remain brave and fight to the last. It is essential for us to have warriors who are motivated and dedicated, and not merely those who wait for orders, Zuljin said and gestured to the gathered orc chiefs, we must cultivate loyalty and camaraderie among our forces, so that they may fight together with strength and courage. We must not rely on omens or superstitions, Zuljin said with a stern voice, we must focus on our own actions and strategies to ensure that no calamity befalls us. He then gestured around the war council, indicating the orc chiefs, until death itself comes. We should remain confident in ourselves and our plans. If our soldiers are not driven by wealth or the pursuit of a long life, then what motivates them, asked Skarik, his voice booming in the quiet chamber. It is not gold that inspires them, Gromgar replied calmly, but courage and loyalty. The example we set for them is more powerful than any riches. Yes, Harguth croaked weakly, his breathing labored, it is ancient orcish wisdom that will lead us to victory. Zuljin nodded, we must remember that our soldiers are fighting for something greater than themselves. They fight for their families, their tribe, and their home. On the day we are ordered out to battle, our soldiers may weep, Zuljin said, gesturing with his hands as if to emphasize his point, but once brought to bay, they will show the courage of a Chugar the brave. He paused for a moment, letting his words sink in before continuing. We must remember that fear and anxiety can be overcome, and that our warriors will fight bravely when the time comes. The skillful tactician is like the Shui Jan snake, Zuljin declared, gesturing with his hands. Strike at its head and you will be attacked by its tail, strike at its tail and you will be attacked by its head, strike at its middle and you will be attacked by both head and tail. No matter which part of the snake you attack, you will not be able to defeat it. Gromgar nodded, his face illuminated by the firelight. The ancient orcish wisdom speaks of this same truth, that even our enemies can be allies in times of need, he said. We must remember that we are all part of the same body, and when faced with danger we must join forces to survive and prevail. Zuljin grunted his agreement. Let us not forget that we are stronger together than apart, he said. We had to find common ground and forge alliances, even with the Sisters of Pain, if we were to overcome this foe. We must not put our trust in the tethering of boars and the burying of chariot wheels in the ground, Zuljin warned, 
gesturing to the gathered chiefs. This is a lesson from ancient Orkish wisdom that we must heed. We must plan for multiple strategies and layers of protection if we are to succeed in battle. The principle of managing an army is to set a single standard of courage all must follow, declared Skarik, pounding his fist on the table. It's not enough to just have strength and prowess in battle, we must also have unity and purpose. Gromgar nodded in agreement. Yes, that is the ancient Orkish wisdom I have been taught. We must strive to build a strong bond among our people and ensure that everyone is fighting for the same cause. Hargooth, laying in the middle, spoke in a broken voice. Unity, purpose, and courage, these are the things that will lead us to victory. Zuljin's voice rumbled in the firelight. The ancient Orkish wisdom tells us that the proper use of ground is essential to making the best of both our strengths and weaknesses. We must choose the right terrain for the situation, so that we can make the most of our advantages and exploit our enemy's weaknesses. Our army is like a single person, Gromgar said, his voice calm and collected. We must lead them together and guide them through the battle, even if they do not wish to go. Skarik grunted, adding, a wise chief knows how to direct their troops and use them working together, united as one. Zuljin nodded his sharp eyes scanning the other orc chiefs. Yes, it is the business of a chief to be quiet and thus ensure secrecy, he said in a low voice, upright and just, and thus maintain order. This is an ancient wisdom that has served our people well and it should not be forgotten. Ancient Orkish wisdom teaches us the importance of deception in war, declared Skarik, pounding his fist against the table. The chief must be able to mystify his officers and men by false reports and appearances, and thus keep them in total ignorance. Gromgar added, by keeping our own troops in the dark, we can keep the enemy off balance. This element of surprise can give us an advantage in battle and help us achieve victory. The council sat in silence, contemplating the words of the orc chiefs. A wise leader knows to keep their enemy guessing, Zuljin declared, gesturing around the council fire. By altering our arrangements and changing our plans, we can keep them without definite knowledge. We can shift our camp and take circuitous routes to further prevent them from anticipating our purpose. He paused and looked around the council, his gaze lingering on each of the orc chiefs. This is ancient orcish wisdom, a strategy that has stood the test of time. When the moment of truth has arrived, Zuljin declared, pounding his fist on the unlit pyre. We must be willing to take risks and make bold decisions if we are to succeed. Let us kick away the ladder behind us and carry our forces deep into hostile territory before revealing our hand. Burn your boats and break your cooking pots, Skarik declared, gesturing to the fire with a sweeping motion of his arm. Like a shepherd driving a flock of sheep, the war chief must drive our army. No other may know whither we are going, but we must trust in each other. He paused for a moment and surveyed the gathered orc chiefs before continuing. It is only through our strength, courage, and unity that we will prevail over our enemies. Zuljin slammed his fist against the pyre, the business of a war chief is to ready the host and bring them into danger. We must be willing to risk our own lives in order to protect our people. The other orc chiefs nodded in agreement, their faces grim with determination. Hargutha's body lay atop the pyre, his wounds still fresh and unhealed, surrounded by the war council, prepared for the final ritual to send his spirit back to Tempest. He spoke in a broken voice, I am a willing sacrifice for our cause, just as my ancestors were many moons ago. This is the ancient orcish wisdom that will guide us to victory. We must never forget the importance of studying the different strategies and tactics when it comes to war, Gromgar declared, his voice low but firm. We must understand the nine varieties of terrain, whether to take an offensive or a defensive stance, and the basic principles of orc behavior. Only then can we hope to succeed in battle. Gromgar said, indeed, we must penetrate deeply into the hostile territory and maintain our cohesion. We cannot afford to be scattered and disorganized when engaging the enemy. The sounds of the night forest filled the air as the orc chiefs continued their war council, Hargoof laying surrounded by the ancient orcish wisdom. Gromgar nodded, understanding the wisdom behind the words. When we march our armies across enemy territory, we must be sure to control the highways and intersections of communication, he said. It is only through this strategic positioning that we can gain an advantage in battle. Skarik grunted in agreement and added, and with the Tower of Majest toppled, we are now free to move into enemy territory without fear of magical interference. Hargooth smiled weakly from his place on the pyre, his eyes heavy with fatigue. 
That is true, he said, his voice barely more than a whisper. But remember, even when you leave your own country behind, you must never forget the ancient orcish wisdom that guides us. Knowledge is power. When you go deep into enemy territory, it is a difficult challenge, Gromgar said gruffly, gesturing with his hands. But if you only take a small piece of ground, it is much easier to hold on to. Skarik nodded in agreement. It is wise to remember the ancient orcish wisdom that says, when you penetrate deeply into a country, it is serious ground. When you penetrate, but a little way, it is facile ground. Ancient orcish wisdom teaches us the importance of knowing the terrain. When you have the enemy's strongholds on your rear, and narrow passes in front, it is hemmed in ground, Gromgar said, his voice booming in the night air. When there is no place of refuge at all, it is desperate ground. Skarik interrupted with a grunt. We must not be caught in such a position, we must always have an escape route. We must not let ourselves be caught in a desperate situation. If we are to fight on dispersive ground, Zuljin said, gesturing to the uneven terrain outside the campfire, we must ensure that our men have a shared purpose and a common goal. He paused for a moment and looked around the war council. But if we are to fight on facile ground, then it is important that all parts of our army remain closely connected. On contentious ground, we must be sure to move quickly and protect our rear, Zuljin declared, thumping his fist against the table. We should not linger in contested territory, for we risk being ambushed from behind if we do. The other orc chiefs nodded in agreement, as they had seen firsthand the consequences of moving too slowly in hostile environments. Strategic planning is crucial, Zuljin began as he addressed the war council. On open ground, we must keep a vigilant eye on our defenses at all times. And on ground of intersecting highways, we must solidify our alliances to increase our chances of success. The orc chiefs understood the importance of swift action and strong alliances in contested environments. Zuljin continued and said, in serious situations, we must be sure to have a steady supply of resources. On difficult terrain, however, we must push forward and take risks if we are to survive. He gestured towards the fire, his hands moving in circles, and continued, ancient orcish wisdom tells us that it is important to be prepared and adaptive, but also to take risks if we are to succeed. We must remember this if we are to survive. Skarik and Grongar discussed tactics for the upcoming battles, with Skarik's bloodthirsty attitude clashing with Grongar's more level-headed approach. On hemmed in ground, Grongar began, gesturing with his hands to emphasize his point, we should block any way of retreat and make sure the enemy has no chance of escape. And on desperate ground, Skarik added, his voice raised in excitement, we must proclaim to our soldiers the hopelessness of saving their lives. We will inspire them to fight even when all hope is lost. Harguth watched as the chiefs argued, and he could feel the ancient orcish wisdom coursing through his veins. He knew they were right, and that their strategies would lead them to victory. He closed his eyes, content in the knowledge that his war was coming to an end. A soldier's mindset is crucial in battle, Zuljin declared as he addressed the war council. When surrounded, they must offer an obstinate resistance, when they cannot help themselves they must fight hard and when they have fallen into danger, they must obey promptly. The orc chiefs nodded in agreement, understanding the importance of discipline and courage in the face of danger and difficult situations. We must be prepared and knowledgeable before engaging any alliances or leading our armies in battle, Zuljin declared, gesturing at their surroundings. We must know the terrain of the land, even its mountains and forests, its pitfalls and precipices, its marshes and swamps. We should also utilize local guides to help us understand the area better. Only then can we use the natural advantages of the land to our benefit and make informed decisions. Skarik spoke up, his voice gruff and stern. To be ignorant of the principles of war does not befit a war chief. We must understand the terrain, the weather, and when to attack and when to retreat. Gromgar agreed, adding, we must also utilize spies to gain intelligence on our enemies and we must study ancient orcish wisdom to develop our strategies. Gromgar nodded, the firelight glinting off his eyes. Orcish wisdom speaks of the same principle, he said with a deep rumble. When we face an enemy, it is best to divide and conquer. We must not give them a chance to gather their strength and unite against us. That is the surest way to victory. He gestured towards Harguth, who lay in the center of the war council. That is why our great leader has been so successful in battle. Zuljin stoked the fire. 
he looked around the camp, at the gathered orc chiefs, and spoke. We must not strive to ally ourselves with every faction we come across, nor should we seek to bolster the strength of other states. We must focus on our own goals, keeping our enemies in check with fear. This way, we can capture their cities and overthrow their kingdoms without even having to go to war. A wise leader knows that their army is only as strong as the weakest link, Gromgar said, gesturing to Harguth with a nod of his head. It is important that we do not become rigid in our approach to managing our troops. We must recognize and reward those who excel and make allowances for those who need more guidance. Scarrick grunted, we should also be willing to adjust our plans when necessary, without regard to previous arrangements. This way, we can ensure that each soldier is treated as an individual while still achieving our goals as a whole. Scarrick said sagely, we must always keep our plans close to our chest and never reveal them until the outlook is bright. We must show our soldiers what we are fighting for when the situation is hopeful, and remain tight-lipped when it is not. This way we can keep their spirits high and ensure that they will fight for us. Gromgar added, this is the ancient orcish wisdom that our ancestors have passed down to us. Let us use it wisely and remember it always. We must not be afraid to put our forces in peril, Zul'jin declared, his voice carrying over the campfire. We must trust that we will come through unscathed if we place us in desperate straits. This is the ancient orcish wisdom, and it has served us well in times of war. He gestured towards the fire with a grunt, adding, let us remember this lesson as we plan our strategy for tomorrow. The orc chiefs nodded solemnly in agreement, their eyes reflecting the orange glow of the flames. Harguth lay in the center, listening quietly but with wisdom in his gaze. It is in moments of peril and vulnerability that we have the greatest opportunity to strike a decisive blow for victory, Zul'jin said, gesturing with his hands. We must remain vigilant and ready for battle, for it is precisely when a force has fallen into harm's way that it can be used with the greatest effect. He paused for a moment and looked around the war council. This is the ancient wisdom of our people, and it is one that will serve us well in the coming days. We must not underestimate our enemy, Gromach said, his voice low and gravelly. He gestured towards the fallen tower of the Magus with one hand. We must understand their purpose in order to be successful in our own warfare. We must anticipate their plans and adjust our tactics accordingly. The other orc chiefs nodded in agreement as they sat around the fire, their faces illuminated by its warm glow. The sounds of the night forest filled the air, a reminder of the wildness that surrounded them. They had come so far since the war with the Dark Mages had ended, and now it was time to plan for the future. Persistent attack on the enemy's flank is an ancient orcish wisdom, Gromgar declared, pounding his fist on the pyre. By wearing down their forces and targeting their commander-in-chief, we shall succeed in the long run. Scarrick grunted in agreement and added, we must remain vigilant and press our advantage. We cannot let them regroup or recover. This is the key to victory. Harguth weakly nodded from his funeral pyre, his eyes firmly shut. The greatest victory is achieved not by force, but by cunning, Zul'jin said as he gestured to the fire. It is in our ability to outsmart our enemies, rather than simply overpower them, that we will find our ultimate triumph. He let out a short grunt of approval and continued. Let us never forget this ancient orcish wisdom for it has served us well in our battles against the Dark Mages, and it will serve us just as well in our future endeavors. On the day that I take command, our borders must be secured, Gromgar declared. We will block the passes, burn the tallies and prevent any emissaries from entering our lands. The other orc chiefs nodded in agreement, and soon the war council was discussing plans to protect their new territories. Harguth lay in the center of the circle, watching silently as the others discussed strategy and tactics. We must remain steadfast and unyielding in the council chamber, Scarrick said, pounding his fist on the table. We must show our strength, so that we may keep control of this situation. Gromgar nodded in agreement. Indeed. We must display our resolve and authority, so that our decisions are followed and respected. If the enemy leaves a door open, we must rush in, Zul'jin declared assertively. It is an ancient orcish wisdom that we must take advantage of any opportunity to gain an advantage over our enemies. Let us use this chance and press forward. The others nodded in agreement, and the council members rose from their seats as a war horn sounded in the night forest. The orcs prepared for battle with a determined spirit, ready to take advantage of any opening and rush in. Zul'jin nodded sagely, his hands gesturing in the firelight. 
This is an ancient orcish wisdom passed down by our ancestors, like Hargooth, he said, gesturing to the pyre where the body of the fallen chief lay. It is important to anticipate your enemy's moves and seize the initiative. You must forestall your opponent by taking what they hold dear and cleverly time their arrival on the ground. He paused for a moment, letting the wisdom of his words sink in. That way, you can gain a strategic advantage over them. If we are to be successful in battle, Zuljin said, gesturing towards Hargoof as he spoke. We must walk the path of rule and understand our enemy's strengths and weaknesses before engaging them. He paused and looked around the war council, making sure all eyes were on him. Let us take a measured approach to battle, for it is only then that we can fight a decisive battle when the time is right. In battle, we must be strategic and patient, Zuljin began as he addressed the war council. At first, we must exhibit the coyness of a maiden, carefully observing the enemy's movements and waiting for an opportunity to strike. Once an opening presents itself, we must emulate the rapidity of a running hare and strike swiftly and decisively. The orc chiefs nodded in agreement, understanding the importance of timing and surprise in battle. The war council had ended, and the council of orc chiefs sat in silent mourning. Hargooth, their respected member and chief, lay motionless on the waiting pyre, his body shrouded in a blanket. It was clear that he had passed on, his spirit returning to the natural world. Gromach, the seasoned orc warrior, knelt by Hargooth's side, a single tear streaming down his face. He gently closed Hargooth's eyes, and then placed the torn hand of an undead android that had fallen to the ground beside Hargooth on his chest. Zuljin, his face solemn, stepped forward and lit the pyre with a burning torch. The flames rose, casting a warm glow on the faces of the tribe. They watched in silence as the pyre burned, the spirit of the fallen chief rising with the smoke to the stormy sky in a final tribute.